Back in 1991, my dad was here filming at Pennington Flash in the Lee area in Greater Manchester. Here we are again in 2018, this time it's myself, this time in front of the camera rather than behind it. What a beautiful place this is, by the way. Uh, fantastic lake, even though it is wondrously windy here today and uh, the leaves are certainly going to be falling in their droves. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the launch, or you might want to call it a relaunch, of the Ahoy It's Foy channel on YouTube. Now those who are unfamiliar with what it actually is and what it serves to do, it's all about me. It's not necessarily fully about me, it's about what I have done and everything that is anything to do with myself. So one day you might see some documentary pieces, the next day you might see some television channel recordings from yesteryear. Uh, however, Today, I'd like to relaunch and re-show the documentary. It's first launching on YouTube, is what we're seeing today, and I'd like to present it to you. But before we do that, this sort of relaunch calls for some sort of party. Unfortunately, there's no one with me. And that's why I want you to be involved in my journey as well. Indeed, there's not even been all of me in the last five months or so, because there's only been half of me. That's because I've been drawn away time and again covering the hurricane situation out in the Pacific and in the North Atlantic Ocean. But I hope in the next few months to be much more prominent, at least in my personal stance, and I hope you can join in with me over the next few months. Come and join me here at Pennington Flash. I want to interview you. If you've got anything that relates to my story, I want to hear from it and I'd like you to take part as well, if you feel like that's the right thing for you, of course. So now we're going to show the documentary again in full. It's six months old today, and it's got fantastic... Well, we've had excellent reviews at least, so I'm, I'm on good account that I've been told it's excellent. What makes it what it is as well for me is the fantastic voice, the narrating voice, of Chris Rogers. And here it is. I'd like to introduce you to a young man called Nathan. He is an aspiring broadcaster, media producer, musician, and a local voice for young people. Just uh, if you want to get many people know him for his most popular work to date through his international project Force 13. However, behind the successes of his media work is a long gripping tale of struggle, difficulties surrounding mental health and growing up in today's demanding and challenging world. Over the past six months, he has opened a window into his life story, an intricate passage that we're going to walk through from the beginning to the present. Along this road, Nathan talks to us about where he was born. This is the site of the old village hospital, which is near Wigan, of course. This was where I was born over 22 years ago, in February 1995. Uh, it was a very interesting day. If you were to ask my mother, I was almost born in a toilet, but it, it happened to be what used to be the hospital. It's now a bunch of houses. Nathan was born at 8.53 p.m. on February the 2nd, 1995, and returned home two days later.
noted for generally being a quiet and cheeky baby, he enjoyed spending time with his brother, solving puzzles, counting, and looking through picture books in his first years. And as soon as he could walk, he would run, wandering into the unknown in his first family holiday to Turkey in 1996, where he started befriending unwitting strangers. Although, he would never go any further in playing a wind instrument. Nathan had a typical early development, although required speech therapy for a phonemic disorder. During nursery, a teacher remarked on his fascination with numbers, and that most of his time was spent alone rather than with other children. His speech development improved markedly by the end of 1998, paving the way towards a settled life in school the following year. As the first school year got into full swing, Nathan was prescribed glasses due to astigmatism, and throughout primary school he developed a class reputation of being the numbers guy, enjoying his well above average proficiency in mathematics. However, in school he was also shy, and was never truly on the social level of his peers, often dominating proceedings with only the topics he was interested in. This social deficiency would become more obvious in later years of school. The first fascination was numbers, followed by geography, weather and computers. I remember when I was very young it started off being maths, that's where it began. And as I progressed through the years, I mean by the end of primary school I was the best person in the class, probably the best person in the local area of maths. In early 2002, at the age of seven, Nathan started to take piano lessons. First starting with a small electronic keyboard, the family bought an old piano whilst this interest and his ability progressed. Over the next year, he passed his grade one practical exam and had started to play grade two and three pieces of music. However, the interest waned for a time during 2003 before being picked up again. From an early age, Nathan was often perceived to be different. His playing style would be very individual and orderly. And later on, he developed issues in his ability to socialise with classmates. His interests were of a very narrow range, and his vocabulary was always several years ahead of his age group. Conversely, his social abilities were behind the curve, unable to recognise sarcasm and regularly taking a literal meaning to common phrases. He disliked physical activity when not on his own terms and developed minor anxieties and anger issues around classmates. In 2005, Nathan's mother raised the issues with school and several health professionals got involved. Meanwhile, Nathan's main interests by this time were geography, computers and the weather. It was difficult to direct his attention away from these subjects during conversation and his geography knowledge in particular was huge during the peak of his interest. During some phases of his weather interest he would record the maximum and minimum temperatures of cities around the world 
and generate charts on the computer. Naturally, he would also discuss the weather forecast with almost anyone he came into contact with. 2006 was Nathan's transition year from primary to secondary education. In this period, he started to record videos of his endeavours on the computer, including the lunar eclipse of March 2007. After a turbulent final year in primary school, the drastic change in attitudes in high school would prove to be a more difficult challenge, beginning with a negative overall experience at summer school. Whilst still excelling in mathematics, geography and music at the start of high school, Nathan found more practical subjects challenging. Additionally, the rewriting of the social rules that came with a much larger school and with his peers developing in different ways of their own, he began to develop general anxieties around school. However, perhaps the brightest feature of his tenure at high school was his ability as a pianist, which was on show to hundreds during the four performances he gave there. I first met Nathan in 2007 and he came to me so he could uh, take the grade five piano exams. And at first, when we met him, he was quite shy and quiet. But after a few lessons, we'd gone very well and um, he progressed very well indeed. surprised me at one point because he, he would he would play the uh, we started playing the Mozart sonata K280 and uh, one of the pages was 30 seconds and Nathan would always try to beat it with the uh, with speed and normally achieved it so he, he would do it in 26 seconds so he always he always sort of had that um, about him to be able to um, play to quicker speed Another thing about Nathan was I found out that he, he had perfect pitch or the technical term being absolute pitch. He could You could play any note on the piano and Nathan with his back turned to you would be able to name the note. He would also be able to name a chord, any chord you played, he could do that even if it was inverted which uh, one of my pupils tried to fool him with but uh, but Nathan caught him out on that one. Now other people with perfect pitch are Mozart, Beethoven, Frank Sinatra, and would you believe Jimi Hendrix. Nathan Foy everyone. That's incredible Nathan. I can barely remember what I did 10 minutes ago. And you can remember the whole that piece off the top of your head. That is incredible. I bow down to you, young man. That is amazing. In the later part of 2007, Nathan also turned his attention to writing and wrote three short stories over the following year. He was also introduced to animation and music production in IT class and enjoyed these particular fields, often making video productions of his own at home. However, anxieties around school continued to increase during 2008 as Nathan became ever more removed from the social and cultural values of his classmates. Finally, in June of that year, Nathan was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, a pervasive developmental disorder which is a form of autism. As is the case for millions around the world, this condition influenced his life in positive and negative ways, and whilst its effects would be suppressed in later years, major issues were still on the horizon. During the high school years, Nathan also picked up a second instrument, the double bass. His understanding of music theory and his natural ability allowed him to progress quickly, but issues with motivation soon brought this to a halt. In January 2009, what turned out to be the final and most turbulent chapter in his time at school, 
began with the first edition of the Daily Email, a daily newsletter that he distributed to friends. Initially beginning at a low number of readers, the publication slowly gained more traction through January, reaching a peak mailing list of 16. The newsletters would discuss amusing or interesting events at school, the weather, news and requests from readers. Like with anything he turned his attention to, the newsletter was the new fixation, fueled by the growing need for an outlet during an increasingly hostile tide of social isolation and mounting workload at school. In February, the situation would seriously deteriorate. The articles deviated from discussing school news to targeting particular classmates as a source of mockery. At first, it was good-humoured, and whilst some argued that it stayed that way throughout, it was true that the stakes gradually grew in the articles throughout the month, and some readers were concerned and eventually angry. Nathan maintained that everyone mentioned in the articles were consulted about what was written, and that there was no resistance. And did interviews, uh, wrote articles about this person, pretty, pretty slanting articles. However, my defence always to this day and beyond is that he always gave me permission to write these articles um, and produce them. But this was a different me back then, obviously things were so much different. Uh, it, it's very difficult to get caught up on that. However, the potential disgrace of a project that had overstepped its boundaries, along with all the other prevailing issues, led to a suicide attempt in early March. He began to lose weight, his confidence went really down, his self-esteem was at rock bottom. He'd given up on everything and um, started to become suicidal, so it's not nice. My confidence, aspirations and life were seemingly in tatters, Nathan wrote. After the suicide attempt, he stayed in his room for days and never entered mainstream schooling again. The rest of the school year was spent at his grandparents' house, where he slowly re-engaged with his interests of journalism, nature and weather. A weather station was installed at home, where he also grew sunflowers that spring. For years, Nathan wouldn't leave the house alone and would not regularly travel independently until 2015. He wouldn't make a new friend for nine months and eventually lost contact with all of his prior school friends. He was a forlorn lonely figure who lost any confidence in social interaction which he avoided for months despite an intense loneliness. During summer 2009, Nathan continued to spend life in the wilderness. As the summer wore on, his weather interest would assume a narrower scope into the world of hurricane tracking. Meanwhile, his parents enrolled him onto Interhigh, an online school that taught a variety of subjects in a virtual classroom on the computer. Nathan found the procedure difficult, however, especially when called to attention by the teacher or when presented with opportunities to communicate with other students. There were high points to the early months of the school year, however, such as the geography project which involved visiting a river and writing about its various features. As darker nights drew in, Nathan started to become depressed again, mainly due to his complete lack of confidence and fears surrounding communication. What was arguably a worse time, or it felt like at the time, would have been the winter of 2009-10. Uh, having been alone for so long, months and months, and really, really struggling socially, trying ever so hard to come out in that regard, it was, uh, and, and seeming to fail, uh, it just didn't work out. In December, he registered an account on an internet forum about autism that he had regularly visited. After days of anxiety, he finally created his first post, which was considered to be a breakthrough at the time, after Nathan's last performance at school in summer 2008, he wouldn't play piano publicly again until January 2010, 
when, despite his major anxieties, he played in front of the online school audience over the internet. This was followed by an event held by the school in March, where students and staff spent a weekend socialising with activities. This, however, only served as a reminder of Nathan's seemingly insurmountable barriers due to persistent anxiety. At this time, Nathan was introduced to a new youth club near Manchester, which showed promise towards his social aspirations and confidence building. In 2010 um, was when I first started to get asthma, the uh, Autism Society of Greater Manchester area. Uh, that's where I met Michelle uh, for the very first time. And it's so difficult, I guess, to explain how nervy these first encounters were after everything that had been going on. I hadn't left the house in 10 months. Um, I would not, I, I'd be extremely anxious in public places. But it was a step in the right direction and would mark the beginning of something special for the next seven years. Through the spring of 2010, Nathan realised his interest in video editing and production and began to take videos of scenery and family outings. Eventually, the idea of a Town Profiles documentary series was conceived, and Nathan's first public production, a documentary on the history of Blackpool, found its way onto YouTube. Geographically speaking, Blackpool is on the west coast of the UK in Lancashire, west of Preston and north of Liverpool. He also began to create time lapses and still had ideas about furthering a news publication and even a website called the Online Post. Additionally, Nathan also made new friends online, some through school, others through the online forum that he still struggled to communicate on. Later in the year, he started to dabble with basic animations. And by September came about the concept of hurricane season animations. Um, looking at, back at it, it was so very primitive, you know, even the map was like a cartoon really, wasn't it? After a year at Interhigh, Nathan's family searched around for other forms of tuition for the 2010-2011 academic year, what would have been the final year of high school. However, it would be several months before private tutors began to set Nathan on course to pass the basic exams at the end of the academic year. Meanwhile, some of Nathan's friendships were turning sour as 2010 neared its end, and for the third winter in a row he became depressed. It was speculated that seasonal affective disorder may also have been playing a part in this thrice recurring issue. Back at the youth club, returning staff member Paul met Nathan for the first time. I was first introduced to Nathan at ASMA in 2010. Uh, initially he came across as very quiet, very shy, quite withdrawn, but there was a little spark to Nathan, a little more intelligence was, was shining through, you know, the, the stuff that Nathan was able to talk about it was very impressive uh, and I realised at that point that Nathan was going to be something special. After another very low suicidal point in early January 2011, things began to take a turn for the better. In November 2010, the total YouTube view count on the online post was around 1,500. This soared to 5,000 by the end of winter, mainly due to the hurricane season animations. The issue of posting on the internet forum, which at the time seemed like an impossibility due to anxiety, was gradually overcome and was considered to be highly important at the time. Also, outings with the youth club and meeting professionals in education, computing and mental health focused Nathan onto a more definite future. Later in the spring, confidence would continue to improve 
and at age 16, Nathan applied to volunteer at the youth club. Knowing how important it was for Nathan to help others, I thought we would introduce an idea of him being a volunteer for us to encourage the choir, the shy ones, to come out a little more uh, and to try different things. Uh, and Nathan really proved to do well at this and he seemed to want to engage in doing this, so I think it helped his confidence. ASGMA, or ASMA, was a charity who received funding from BBC Children in Need and representatives visited in May with a view to featuring them later that year. It was also at this time that Nathan, with backing from members of the youth club, decided to create a new monthly publication about autism, Thinking Different. It was uh, getting other people with the same shy, quiet issues to get together and talk online. And I thought that was such a good idea and that gave me ideas for Nathan helping us as a volunteer as I realised what his strengths were. The online post stopped producing editions in March 2011 in favour of its rapidly changing focus to weather videos. But most of Nathan's life and progress was made on the internet forum in a dramatic transformation of confidence. By July, he had posted no less than 10,000 times and this fixation would become more of an issue in August when another 6,000 were made. This obsession led to instability in his mood until he decided that the obsession was over as more important events took hold. First, Nathan was in correspondence with the NHS Five Boroughs, as it was known at the time. On August the 15th, he was interviewed for their newsletter about his progress and tribulations with mental health. After the exams had been taken at the beginning of summer, Nathan's family were searching for a sixth form college that would accept him for the work he had already done online, rather than the potentially meagre exam results that would arrive later in August. The local college was seen to be an issue due to the presence and fear of seeing former classmates, and so they approached Bolton Sixth Form College, 10 miles away. On August the 23rd, after discussions with BBC Children in Need, their production crew visited Asma and Nathan's home to tell his story. I was asked to join Nathan uh, as a support worker uh, to go through the filming process, uh, which was quite a challenging time, sitting on a bus with lots of strangers with a camera and a big mic staring at you. Both me and Nathan went through uh, quite a few experiences, which brought us quite a bit closer together than maybe we would have done. Uh, but the whole experience was, in, was a really good, positive one. Three days later, favourable exam results arrived and Nathan enrolled at college. Two weeks later, he would interact with people of his own age for the first time in two years. In the meantime, Hurricane Irene became the first hurricane to strike the United States East Coast in seven years, inflating view counts to record levels on the online post YouTube channel. On August the 27th, the channel registered over 600 views in one day alone. The effect of this galvanised Nathan's efforts in producing more hurricane animations. In July, Thinking Different launched a website and by the end of August established an internet forum of its own. Whilst attracting a modest amount of interest through the autumn months, the forum would never prove worthwhile. In September, Nathan started at college studying computing. He found the process difficult and demanding and still struggled to socialise. As the black dog of winter approached once again, Nathan found it more difficult to balance his three major commitments. However, the onset of depression wouldn't arrive until late November, after his biggest moment to date. In autumn, it became known that Nathan's story so far would be aired on television during BBC Children in Need's charity telethon held in November, with his segment introduced by actor David Tennant. Children with Asperger's syndrome can find the world a very difficult and lonely place. If you can't make eye contact or start a conversation, then making friends is pretty hard. If you're thrown by the slightest change in routine, then just living life can be truly daunting. I'd like to introduce you to a young man called Nathan. He's 16 and he's going to tell you how it's been for him. 
you sort of like detached from the world in a way. You can't really make connections with people as easily as other people can. And with Paul's help, Nathan is about to take a massive step. See you later. Bye bye. Off to college we must go. He's starting at a new school. It's fantastic news, but also daunting, because everyday tasks that we take for granted can be extremely tough for Nathan. Thank you. Thank you, David Tennant. Nathan, you're fantastic. We salute you. We hope college is going brilliantly. Fifteen pounds pays for a one-to-one -one travel support session like the one you've just seen. And that support means Nathan can go to college. It's changed his life. However, it wasn't long until the college experience became difficult to stay motivated for. And whilst Nathan did well in the course, his other projects were beginning to crowd his schedule too. Thinking Different editions were produced monthly, and a week of short documentary videos about hurricanes was announced on the online post, which by this time had reached 35,000 views. But a week before the documentary series began, it became clear that it would not be ready on time and plans were made to start a new project for Hurricanes instead. It was named Force 13. Nathan was depressed once more over the winter and staying on top of college commitments proved ever more difficult. A series of incidents within college had a negative effect, amplified by depression and stress. Meanwhile, the Force 13 project began fairly well with over 8,000 views in the first three months and was seen to be the way forward. At the end of February, the situation came to a head and Nathan left college after six months of attendance due to anxieties, depression and burnout. For the following week, he remained isolated in his room as a result. Despite this, he still passed the first year of his course with a distinction for the work he had already done. Another casualty of the crash was the Force 13 project, which was abandoned despite its promise. Thinking Different, meanwhile, began to turn its focus towards producing videos about autism, with one of the first video productions featuring Nathan himself. Here we are. Welcome to the inaugural Thinking Different video. In this episode, uh, he's explaining what Thinking Different does and how you can help us. At Thinking Different, we want a place where people can have a voice to be able to express themselves freely. And by May, Nathan was conducting his own interviews. This is Sarah, who is, uh, who's been working at Aspirations for four years. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about those changes in the autism um, diagnostic criteria. Elsewhere, Nathan returned to Force 13 in April 2012, and the project began to grow with more hurricane season animations. At the end of May, he produced his first ever forecast video on Tropical Storm Beryl. The video helped yield a daily view total of 471 across the channel, the third highest ever recorded at the time. The next month, flooding hit the local area, and Nathan's first significant video production for Force 13 covered the event, attracting over 1,000 views. Days later, the 99th video on the channel was published, blending together multiple hurricane seasons into one animation. This caused a spark in the imaginations of the community for hypothetical or fictional hurricane season animations. Whilst a controversial subject at the time, the first hypothetical animation was completed in July, receiving positive reviews. By the end of the year, the number of videos would swell to 221, with most of the videos being full season animations in the Atlantic, or regular storm updates, including that of Hurricane Sandy. Later in the year, Nathan was determined to make amends for last year's failure of a week-long feature and announced Hurricane Week 2012, a six-day series of videos counting down a top 100 list of tropical cyclones. This was the first feature on the project to feature Nathan personally and his narrative. Anniversary yesterday, when the animations of the time moved over to its own channel, Force 13, which is a dedicated channel for tropical cyclones. However, the biggest impact of the year arrived in December, when Typhoon Bofa impacted the Philippines as a Category 5 storm. 
Force 13 produced 15 updates, which were seen by over 46,000. The total viewers for the year were over 200,000, far beyond any expectations at the start of the year. After a short depressive spell in December, Nathan entered 2013 busier than ever with the beginning of UK weather forecasts. Okay, more light snow possible along almost the whole of the east coast of England and Scotland there. have really struggling to get. On Thinking Different, editions had stopped being produced, but a new audio series was planned for the coming spring. Then, in April, a new opportunity came along. Nathan spoke to the manager of LDOK, a community radio station for people with learning disabilities, where he was offered a weekly presenting slot. He would stay at LDOK Radio for three years. Near the end of April 2013, Nathan also explored his musical ability through the computer and started to create his own musical compositions for Force 13 Productions. Perhaps the most memorable early work was for a new format of daily updates that took place that year, the Tropical Weather Bulletin. And welcome to your Tropical Weather Bulletin for May the 26th, 2013. It's six days until the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. As summer arrived, LDOK Radio sent Nathan to the Autism Show in Manchester to cover some of the events at the exhibition. For Thinking Different, he also filmed some of the speakers and interviewed individuals, charities and professionals for both outlets. Show here in Manchester, it's uh, already been in London, but we're at the Manchester Show on the 28th and the 29th of June. Here I am, first of all, on the 28th. I'm here for both days. Uh, representing LDOK Radio and of course my own venture Thinking Different. Hello there, I'm here at uh, Autism Eye Magazine. I'm here now with SEN Magazine. Uh, I'm here with Carol Povey and you're the uh, director, one of the directors of the National Autistic Society, is that correct? Summer is coming on 2013 and we've got... These months of exposure to the world like never before possibly helped Nathan realise his sexuality. He believed he was gay. The season contest has opened on the website in the past few days. And this happens to be the very f place where Nathan and I, when Nathan was feeling quite down and low because he was wanting to express his sexuality but had no idea how to do that, this is the very place he spoke to me for the very first time. Uh, obviously that was quite a poignant moment for myself and for Nathan. I trouble with a lot of young people on the spectrum, it's knowing how to express their feelings. Uh, and for Nathan, obviously being aware that he felt differently uh, and struggling to communicate that with his family, uh, it, it must have been a very big relief for, for Nathan to come out for the very first time. And I would hope that that was a big change for him for the future. I stood in terms of the weird and wonderful world of sexuality. Uh, came quite apparent rather quickly that I was more into male attraction than female attraction. Um, I had one or two small relationships to begin with, uh, but the coming out phase is probably the most difficult of all, especially when you've had the background that I've had. Uh, it's very difficult to tell even your most respected confidants uh, about this new development, especially when you've been maybe living a lie for so long before then. Even more difficult, people who might be older perhaps. Thank goodness the world's becoming more open to that sort of thing. Let's hope that continues. At least in this country, it is quite a, uh, it's not really a taboo anymore, which is rather nice to see, uh, especially in some of the cities like Manchester and London and hopefully up here in Edinburgh where I'm talking to you from right now. It, it, it's difficult in a world where people do still assume that everyone is straight. It's so difficult to find someone if you are of the LGBT community. Um, probably even worse if you're trans, I've no experience of that. But it would help a lot more if people were more open, I would say. Over summer, 
Nathan started a radio course at DBBC in Bolton, where he met his future LDOK co-host, JP. We will wrap up the show. Wrap up the show? Oh. Yes, it is time for that. Wrap um, up the show? Oh. And I've got to tell you, the two hours have gone extremely fast. It has today. flown, hasn't it? It really has, more this... than any other show, in my opinion. It, it, my God, we don't have to talk nonsense, but it doesn't have flown. <laughs> they would broadcast together for over six months. Around the same time, Nathan announced that Force 13's Hurricane Week would be going ahead once more in November 2013, with a highly ambitious project planned for what was becoming a marquee feature for viewers. This time the output increased from three hours of video features to eight. Coupled with an increase in production quality, the workload amounted to dozens of man hours. We'll be running special features and taking a look back through the year 2013 as it happened in the tropical region. At the end of October 2013, Nathan was invited by Children in Need to the House of Lords for an audience with other charities, policymakers and politicians. Behind me is the Houses of Parliament and uh, I was there back in 2013 with Children in Need uh, for an event that went on there. It was a fantastic evening. Uh, whilst I was there we were invited into those little marquees down there, the green one and the red one striped over area, hanging area. That was a day I won't really forget to be honest. Um, very fun experience that it was and I had to go there alone because um, the crew that I was going to be going with uh, were stuck. They couldn't get on the train south to London from Manchester uh, so we had to go it alone. So I was representing the youth club all on my own at that point. Three weeks before Hurricane Week, production was behind schedule and was hampered even further by the biggest weather event of the year. In early November, Typhoon Haiyan made international news when it became one of the strongest storms to ever impact the Philippines, and Force 13 was on the forefront producing nine video updates. The calamity brought Force 13 to new heights and responsibilities in forecasting these storms, with the updates being viewed 150,000 times in a week. Um, in that region near the epicentre of the landfall when it does occur in the next 12 hours. Nathan's work on the storm was featured on Dutch television and he was interviewed locally by Bolton FM. It's coming their way and they at least got minimum 24 hours to, to prepare for it. Yeah, in this case it was much more than 24 hours but it was still an extremely bad storm that any amount of preparation in some places wouldn't have really been, wouldn't have made too much difference. BBC Radio Manchester. And he tracked the typhoon Haiyan. Why? Well, what's the attraction? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, first of all... That's the question all... everyone seems to I ask know, me. Yes, I know. Yeah. And in print in the Bolton News. I was extremely busy with Pulse 13 for Hurricane Week in 2013 and was working 12-hour days near the end. Uh, and after that, I think it was just really very much a crash, um, a massive crash, and it resulted in uh, an existential crisis. I've had two of those, existential depressions. It's where you feel as though... Uh, your very existence in the world, whatever might lie beyond it, whatever might lie beyond life, what is it all? And some people get extremely frightened by those things. Uh, I did once or twice, uh, one or two instances where you, you got the shakes um, when retiring to bed at night, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, and those were very scary times, I have to say. It took weeks, months of finding material online that just reassuring material really that made one feel better about those things and eventually you just get on with productivity, doing things. The less people do in terms of productivity that you know I I worry for people out there right now. People are stuck behind computer screens every night of their lives and the only thing I can encourage people to do on the outside looking in encourage discourse, talk to people about these issues and uh, flesh it out as much as possible because you will find that people want to talk to you about a certain thing but don't know how to bring it up in a conversation. In January 2014, Nathan was invited behind the scenes at the regional BBC News service, including time at the weather desk followed by another weather interview on local radio in February. 
By this time, the Force 13 YouTube channel had reached over 700,000 views, complemented by its website. After conducting several interviews for Thinking Different the previous year, the project did become dormant as Nathan's attention turned to LDOK Radio and Force 13. In February, LDOK's broadcasters produced a day of live shows on location at the disability oriented IIC show in Manchester. Later, Nathan would take two short breaks from broadcasting there during the course of the year. Actually, come up to see me then. Okay, hello. Force 13 continued to become a more recognised source in the world of storm tracking. Each area of the world is governed by an official storm tracking agency, and in April, Nathan visited one of the most prestigious, the National Hurricane Centre in the United States. After another season of storm tracking, Force 13 reached the 1 million view mark in November, although Nathan decided not to run Hurricane Week that year. In the offline world, Nathan reached the end of his radio course in July 2014 and was searching around for more opportunities. He decided to enrol at a new specialised media college to work with media production. However, most of the work was below his level and he lost motivation quickly, opting to actually produce media there rather than study it. He also conducted a pool tournament and the first ever game show on Force 13 in February 2015. And we're back in the final part of Force 13's Get New Game Show, The Eye of the Storm. Nathan had serious depression issues in late 2014 due to a lack of confidence, failed relationships and a general feeling of failure in life. However, the new year brought new opportunities as Force 13 continued to expand. The project was no longer a one-man band, with new ideas and abilities arriving from other members. In March, Nathan took to the skies to provide coverage of the solar eclipse off the western coast of Scotland. It's a matter of about two minutes or so before the uh, fullest eclipse from us will be reached. We're one of the first people to see it as well. Meanwhile, the tropics were warming up, and the small but growing team began to produce live updates. This feature really came to fruition over the summer as more team members joined the project. all in text. Have we got down to the bottom of why they're predicting such quick weakening after after passing into the South China Sea? Elsewhere, Nathan was still doing regular broadcasts on LDOK radio and was invited to the autism show for the third year in a row. This time, a related group of individual singers the autistic superstars were performing there, and Nathan would be the compare. Nathan was also still a keen photographer and videographer, filming scenery and nature, as well as weather predominantly. In July, he filmed a succession of thunderstorms and garnered significant recognition in December when he captured the disastrous flooding in Cumbria. And in May 2016, the Force 13 project reached 2 million total viewers. From November 2015 to Spring 2016, Nathan finally became more confident in travelling alone, something which until now he had been unable to do. He would also engage in social meetups in Manchester, along with his continued work at LDOK Radio and Asthma. Another new experience was his first public piano performance since school, where Nathan played his own score to a silent movie. <laughs> Nathan also spent a lot of 2016 participating in the LGBT community, engaging with others and producing some film work. Within our flow, we've got across the whole parade during this afternoon. It's two hours away and we're still getting prepared. The flags are going up already. The balloons have already gone. Soon enough, the summer was over 
and Force 13 was about to rise to the occasion in a big way. Hurricane Matthew barreled through the Caribbean and almost proved to be a worst-case scenario for Florida. Force 13's live coverage, however, reached over 400,000 viewers during the week that the storm affected land. But Matthew was a massive thing for Force 13 in particular because of our coverage that we did on the storm in both English and Spanish and we also did 104 consecutive hours of live coverage on the storm. Force 13's coverage was simulcast by a radio station in the Turks and Caicos Islands and was noted by media organisations in Barbados, Florida and South Carolina. For the first time, Force 13 reached 1 million views in a single year, and 2017 would see the biggest revolution in storm update graphics to date. Take one on Cyclone Carlos, which has just formed in the southwest Indian Ocean at 3 p.m. UTC, February 4th, 2017. Effects are likely to be the tropical storm wind field in the green orb over there and then uh, you can see it moving towards the south how it compares against the averages for 1960 to 2016 a long long way to go yet the team were live for cyclone debbie which impacted australia in march Cyclone Debbie, which is approaching the coast of Australia. There it is, the latest on the storm there. Additionally, a video of the storm from the International Space Station went viral. This particular video was put on many websites that you may be familiar with, such as the Sydney Morning Herald, ABC, MSN, Russia Today, CNN, BuzzFeed, Mashable and The Guardian, and for a time became the number one top trending video on YouTube Australia. Remarkable. Later that year, Force 13 first entered the current affairs arena with a debate program. Will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. Welcome to Debate 13, our newest program here on Force 13, where for an hour, at least on this occasion, we'll be discussing what's in the news with opinion from our panel. And provided coverage on the US solar eclipse. There we are, there is the live shot of the eclipse first occurring. The Atlantic Ocean saw its worst season for some time in 2017, with hurricanes Harvey, Irma and Maria. Despite illness at the time, Nathan and the Force 13 team again rose to the occasion. Harvey has formed right now, that's the breaking news, and the storm continues to intensify as it continues towards the northwest. Update 19 on Hurricane Irma, still a Category 5, with winds of 175 miles an hour and a pressure of 922 millibars. The annual view count was more than double the previous year, at 2.4 million. Just grazing the western coast right now. In 2018, the channel continued to go on in the same vein, with the first automated graphics whose usefulness continues to be realized. Western Australia and is a tropical storm on the Sappho Simpson scale, category one on the Australian cyclone scale, with winds of 40 miles per hour and a pressure of around 994 millibars. For six months, beginning in September 2017, Nathan has taken us on a whistle-stop tour of his life as it is today, recounting his experiences along the way. Um, and you always learn something I think over time and uh, there's always a surprise to be had as well you can never be too bullish or too confident about your predictions at any level and because it's not an exact science is probably what makes it one of the most um, engaging appealing fields that there is his first stop was to an autism club that he became youth representative of in the autumn now there's Mike, he uh, does all the work here, and uh, we're closing up for the night. So, uh, Mike, yes. we'll see you next week, and uh, yes, all right. I'm sure we'll do more discussions on how we're going to get the group 
Right, right. Going on to Good. better heights in the future. Well, thanks for coming anyway, both of you. Much obliged, thank you. He also became a member of the Wigan Youth Voice, a group pushing for more opportunities in the community. Certain people within the community elements of it don't know what's out there for one, but also that they might know a bit of what's out there, but it doesn't actually pertain to what they actually want. And I really think we need to fill in that gap, that particular gap. Um, I mean, some people want friendship groups just general friendship groups where people can come together and talk about whatever they want to talk about that evening, a social space. Others might want more um, computers and technology, more selective music, um, sport, arts of all various kinds. And we just really want to get a handle on what these people are actually looking for and how we can assist them. We also saw him during Hurricane Week 2017, which ran live on Force 13. You'll get double trouble then. Everything that's supposed to be off is off. And I'll put these headphones on because I'm speaking shortly. We take a look at Force 13's Keep it rolling for just a minute. Just to check the stream is working well. Everyone knows what's going on. Now I'm going to turn my microphone on. And welcome to Force 13 live tonight, and here I am on the webcam at last. Uh, my name is Nathan Foy, we are live doing the Force 13's top 10 tonight. You weren't expecting that, were you? Uh, nor was I, actually. Nathan also continues to search for other ways forward, and is passionate about being involved and inspiring others to be involved with him. In 2018, he plans to launch new media projects for the local community. And over this way you can see all the buildings along the hill and uh, Edinburgh Castle which is somewhere over there, not too far away. You get a beautiful view up there. I've got so many memories of this great city. Um, I've only been here a few times but it's always stuck with me. It's one of my favourite places. These steps also have a little bit of history as well over here in Edinburgh. Just at the foot of the castle as you can see up there. Um, and I remember here being here several years ago, back in the uh, summer of 2012 with the youth club, and um, they had a very fun day out, I can remember that. I can remember Paul's mangled face coming out of the minibus over there as they parked up. However, there is still one box left to tick. This is what we're going to show him. He doesn't know I've even taken lessons. So around mid-September was when it all began again, uh, after several years out of driving. Uh, and it was, it did feel, it was a bit of a mad rush because uh, they were changing the rules of the driving exams in, in uh, early December. And uh, even though I probably wouldn't have uh, had too much of an issue after the rule change, we wanted to get in before if we could. Uh, so the theory test was done in October, mid-October, 50 out of 50 on the theory test. Uh, with a clear pass on the uh, hazard perception test and um, then we were sort of going towards the exam and it was toing and froing and we were looking for dates every day until the end of November. I took an exam today and passed. In driving. November 24th we finally managed to get a book, booked exam for the 27th which was three days preparation time by which point we it was 50-50 touch and go with the exam and uh, the exam itself was um, <coughs> somewhat worrying <laughs> and apart from one or two minor issues it was still a very solid pass and no major issues at all so um, it just seemed that everything had aligned for that to occur before December the 4th and it seemed against all the odds that that would happen in the first place. <laughs> I was quite pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> 